Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us here at our European Research and Development Facility. Today, I'm pleased to say we have a lot of exciting new developments to share with you. Not only will we provide you with an update on our model lineup here in Europe, but we will also share details on the important role the region is playing in Honda's global electrification strategy. As such, today we'll see us showcase the breadth of Honda's offering as a modern day mobility company. Firstly, we will share with you the latest electrified new product for 2023 on both two and four wheels. We will also take the opportunity to give you an insight into the ambitions we have for our energy management business, e-progress. To round off the session, we will share new details on the advanced energy management research taking place in this facility. You will be the first guests to be given the chance to see this technology up close and speak with some of the R&D leaders who are pioneering our work in this field. Now, it is especially fitting to be with you sharing all of this as Honda prepares to celebrate its 75th anniversary later this year. So before we look towards the future, let's firstly look back at how we got here. Starting with the founding of Honda back in 1948, we've achieved a lot in the past 75 years. to provide an overview on Honda's global electrification strategy and the important role the European region will play within this going forward. Please welcome to the stage, President of Honda Motor Europe, Katsuhisa Okuda. Thank you, John. <coughs> yes, for these 75 years, we have dedicated ourselves to the power of dreams, creating products and services that meet the ever-changing needs of our customers, innovating and adapting to the global environment with unique solutions that ensure we remain a company that society wants to exist. From the iconic Super Cup and the first generation Civic that brought the joy of mobility to so many people. Through to innovations uh, like uh, the Insight Hybrid and Honda Jet, and breakthrough research and development in the areas of advanced powertrains. Honda has always sought to push new boundaries, surpass customer expectations, and contribute to society. Over the course of our history, Honda has established itself as the world's largest power unit manufacturer with approximately 30 million units sold annually across our motorcycle, automobile, power product, marine, and aircraft divisions. Now, as we tackle the challenge of environmental sustainability, Honda has set ambitious global targets to focus our future development. We will be carbon neutral across all global operations by 2050, adopting a multi-pathway approach by deploying the most appropriate technologies and solutions to best suit the markets we operate in. For automobiles globally, we have committed that 
100% of our sales will be zero emission by 2040. And as a step of this journey, last year, we confirmed Honda will launch 30 EV models globally by 2030. And for motorcycles, we are committed to carbon neutral operations during the 2040s, and I have announced the launch of 10 EV globally uh, by 2025. And this level of ambition has seen a reform of operations at Honda Motor. An elect electrification business development function spanning all Honda product divisions has been established. And this is designed to further strengthen and accelerate Honda's electrification business. Honda Motor has allocated 64 billion US dollars to us research and development activities over the next decade, with the majority of spend assigned to us electrification. And Honda will also continue to foster strategic alliances with third party. This has seen Honda cooperate with companies such as GM and LG Energy Solutions and Sony in recent years. At the end of April, Honda Motor CEO Toshihiro Mibe reconfirmed Honda's ambition to deliver mobility for people around the world with zero environmental impact and zero traffic collision fatalities. To achieve this advance in mobility, our research and development will focus on five core areas. Carbon neutral power units, an energy management system that uses the power unit as an engine uh, energy source, and resource circulation, automated driving, and connectivity. And Europe will play a central role here in this global journey. And not only is it one of the most advanced regions in terms of regulation, but consumer understanding and demand for sustainable products continue to grow rapidly. Today, we will highlight some of the short and long-term solutions we are working on here in Europe to deliver against Honda's global ambitions. To provide more details on this, please welcome Senior Vice President of Honda Motor Europe, Tom Gardner. Thank you, Kurdistan. We all recognize that in Europe, both customers and society are moving swiftly towards full electrification. Applying greater focus here will help Honda make changes more quickly and more successfully across the globe. As we manage this transition, we are adopting a three-phase approach towards electrification in Europe. In 2019, we outlined our ambition to electrify all our mainstream models in Europe. Within three years, with the 2022 launch of the full hybrid Civic eHEV, this objective was achieved. This was phase one of Honda's electric vision and placed us ahead of many competitors and the first Honda region to achieve this feat. Turning our attention to today's unveils, we continue to see a rapid shift away from conventional powertrains. However, not all customers are ready to make the shift to full EV at this point. Therefore, in phase two of our electrification journey, we will deepen the Honda lineup of electrified vehicles available in Europe and broaden the range of low and zero emission technologies available as we support customers with the transition towards electrified mobility. This next step will see the introduction of three new SUV models with a range of powertrain solutions to suit different customer requirements. We will see the further application of Honda's latest eHEV full hybrid powertrain to both the all new ZRV and CRV. And with the latter, we will also see the introduction of Honda's first plug in hybrid for Europe, the EPHEV. This is in addition to our new all electric SUV, the ENY1, ideal for customers looking to make the switch to a full electric vehicle. Finally, 
from the mid-2020s, in line with the development of customer and market readiness, we turn to phase three. We will steadily increase the proportion of full EVs within the range, utilizing Honda's global EV platform and resources. For motorcycles, we will take the first step towards electrification with the September introduction of our first all-electric moped in Europe, the EM1E. Focused on younger, more urban riders, it is not only perfectly suited to their everyday modern lifestyles, the EM1E will also serve as an ideal route into our family of two-wheeled models. But enough talking. Time we had a closer look at our latest products, starting with the three new SUVs. Let me introduce the Honda ZRV, CRV, and ENY1. I hope you agree, some fantastic additions to the Honda lineup. At Honda, we're all very excited about these latest additions to our fully electrified model range. First up is an all new nameplate for Honda, the Honda ZRV. This is a sleek yet imposing SUV that blends exceptional performance and efficiency with a dynamic design and drive. Delivering against the versatility and space customers expect from a compact SUV, while offering a truly dynamic driving performance for a vehicle in this segment. We expect customers to be taken aback by how well it handles, and we encourage everyone here, when you get the opportunity to give it a go, we're sure you will be impressed. Next up, we have the all new CRV. The latest iteration of our flagship SUV has been improved across the board. And alongside the hybrid powertrain options I've highlighted, customers will experience the class-leading comfort, technology, and safety features they have come to expect from the CRV over the previous five generations. Delivering dynamic performance alongside large SUV versatility and functionality, there is no doubt in our mind that this is the best CRV we've ever offered. And finally, there's the ENY1. Our second all-electric vehicle follows on from the success of the multi-award-winning Honda E, which has been turning heads and delivering customer satisfaction for over three years now. Offering everything a driver or passenger could want from a compact SUV, the ENY1 is a vehicle for modern-day families, many of whom will be looking to take their first steps into EV ownership. We take that responsibility very seriously and have designed the ENY1 to deliver all the benefits of an EV with the trademark Honda versatility, comfort, and performance we know our customers expect. The result is quite striking, and we're excited for customers across Europe to get behind the wheel of one and experience it for themselves. There's no doubt this is the strongest Honda European model lineup in recent years. So let's get more into the detail on each of these vehicles as I welcome to the stage our European product manager, Hannah Swift. Okay, thank you, Tom. I'm looking forward to introducing you all to our latest SUVs, three exciting additions to our fully electrified lineup. Let's start with the ZRV, which is a new nameplate for Europe. Bridging the gap between HRV and CRV, it takes up a unique position within both the compact SUV market 
and the existing Honda model range, starting with the exterior design. The ZRV boasts a sleek and sporty aesthetic, and whilst of a similar length, it has a roof line that is significantly lower when compared to the CRV and other competitors on the market, giving it a striking silhouette. Taking a closer look at the front, you can see the smart honeycomb grille, which is complemented by the striking LED headlights and sequential turn indicators. The flowing profile is underlined by the smooth bumper styling, which creates an eye-catching aesthetic. And the stylish 18-inch alloys further enhance the vehicle's steady stance. Heading inside the ZRV, there is a strong focus on enhancing personal space and comfort, surrounding the driver and passengers with high-quality materials, multiple storage options, ambient lighting, and a sedan-like seating position. This feeling of space is typified by a panoramic glass roof on this advanced grade, which opens up the interior and fills it with natural light. There is eight-way programmable seat adjustment for the driver with heated leather front seats that heighten the sense of comfort. In the back, heated rear seats, USB ports and touch lights all add to the passenger comfort alongside high-quality quilting, which further heightens the sense of sophistication. While additional versatility is delivered by an impressive cargo space that is 20% larger than HRV at 380 litres. For connectivity on the move, the Honda Connect infotainment system comes as standard and on advanced grades features a 12-speaker Bose premium audio setup. Moving on to the ZRV's powertrain, the latest model is fitted with Honda's proven EHEV hybrid technology, combining an Atkinson Cycle 2-litre petrol engine, two electric motors, a high-output intelligent power unit, and an automatic transmission. ZRV delivers a great balance of efficiency and performance with emissions from 130 gram per kilometer combined on the WLTP cycle and fuel economy from 5.7 liters per 100 kilometer. And that leads nicely into one of the most pleasing aspects of the ZRV, which are its fantastic dynamics, similar to those experienced with the latest Civic. By allying lightweight materials and an agile and responsive steering feel with the EHEV powertrain, Honda engineers have been able to provide the kind of exhilarating performance most commonly associated with sportier hatchback or sedan type vehicles. And finally, all grades of the ZRV will be equipped with the full suite of Honda sensing technologies as standard, ensuring you and your passengers travel in safety and style. We're so excited to be launching the ZRV in Europe where it promises to offer something unique within, within the Honda model range. A compact SUV that delivers trademark versatility, safety and comfort alongside class-leading dynamic driving, performance and award-winning hybrid technology. Now, let's move on to the other hybrid product we've unveiled today, our flagship CRV. Honda engineers have refined every aspect of the latest model, resulting in a bold and sophisticated appearance. The first thing you notice as you approach the car is a stylish new honeycomb grille that creates an instantly recognisable aesthetic. Looking in profile and from the rear, you can see unmistakable lines that mark this car out as an evolution of the iconic CRV silhouette, even down to a reworking of the car's trademark high tail lamps. The dimensions of the car have grown compared to the previous generation, both in width and length. The wheelbase has also grown by 40 millimetres, emphasising a more powerful and stable stance. Heading inside, the updated interior has been designed with high quality and tactile materials, including leather upholstery across all grades. The CRV also adopts the family look of a metal honeycomb pattern across the dashboard, first seen in Civic and now on new ZRV as well. As with all Honda SUVs, the Honda Connect infotainment system comes as standard, along with an immersive 12-speaker Bose premium audio system on selected grades. Driver comfort is key and is achieved via the eight-way electric seat adjustment, while the passenger seat comes with its own four-way adjustment. There is also heating and ventilation control across the front seats. In the rear, the premium feel continues as heated seats, USB ports and electrostatic lights are all fitted as standard. The rear seats have 15 millimetres increased legroom compared to the previous car 
and an expanded range of backrest and seat positioning to ensure comfort for all occupants. CRV has always been known as one of the most versatile options in the SUV market, and this latest generation further increases load capacity by 90 litres to around 600 litres, making this one of the best load carriers in the class. And on the plug-in version, there is even an additional 72 litres of subfloor storage, perfect for carrying the charging cable. Moving on to the powertrain, the new CRV will feature the latest generation EHEV full hybrid technology and Honda's first plug-in hybrid option for Europe. Central to the EHEV system is a newly developed 2.0-litre direct injection Atkinson engine alongside a new two-motor automatic transmission. This system delivers emissions from 134 gram per kilometre on the combined WLTP cycle and fuel economy from 5.9 litres per 100 kilometre. The EPHEV option will offer the perfect blend of EV and hybrid performance, providing up to 82 kilometres of all electric range on a single charge. This makes it ideal for those customers who can use the EV range on a regular daily commute, but want the extended range of the hybrid system for longer weekend trips. Of course, the EPHEV still delivers that blend of efficiency and performance that our full hybrid range already delivers. Moving on to the vehicle's safety features, the new CRV offers Honda's most comprehensive range of driver support and collision mitigating technologies. All grades are equipped with the latest, most inclusive suite of Honda Sensing Advanced Driver Assistance System technologies as standard. Selected models will be equipped with Honda Sensing 360. This is the first application of this technology in the region. Sensing 360 adds two corner radars, one at the front and one at the rear, offering all-around protection, including from objects approaching from behind and those crossing in front, removing all blind spot areas. It also comes with LaneWatch, a new function for Europe that reduces blind spots, always ensuring full visibility. To support drivers during parking manoeuvres, a multi-view camera system is available and the automated Honda Parking Pilot system is introduced for the EPHEV version. All of these features combine to create the six, and in our opinion, the best Honda CRV to date. Our flagship premium versatile SUV with a new PHEV offering, delivering exceptional comfort, performance, efficiency, and next generation safety technology. So we've taken you through the hybrid additions to the range. Now we will turn our attention to full electric and the all new EMY1. The EMY1's sophisticated character is defined by a smooth flowing coupe style design, marking it out as an advanced battery electric vehicle. The dimensions are similar to HRV, balancing a compact exterior size with sufficient interior space to meet modern customer requirements. With the battery fitted under the vehicle floor, there is no impact to customer space and comfort. EMY1's emotive design is typified by sleek headlights and an easy to reach charging port centrally located behind a streamlined grillless design. The large 18 inch wheels, wide track and short overhangs result in a very secure stance and contribute to the model's dynamic performance. Now, as the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed, the EMY1 debuts a new EV identity and badging approach for Honda. Built around a white H-bag, this is located most prominently at the front of the EMY1, while at the back, a new stylized font spells out Honda in place of the usual badge, differentiating the EMY1 from the rest of the range. Turning our attention inside, when designing EMY1, the focus was to create a comfortable space that ensures an engaging, stress-free driving experience. Once inside, most striking is the 15.1-inch central portrait-style display, which is split into three distinct zones for simple and quick operation. The upper zone displays frequently used driver aids, such as the navigation system and external cameras, while the centre is for audio and advanced EV information, and the bottom is for climate control. Also featured as standard is the impressive 10.25 inch meter integrated within the dash, providing additional driver information on range, directions, and Honda sensing functionality. 
Finally, as is expected of any compact SUV, the EMY1 offers a flexible and spacious cargo area with 346 litres of storage, around 10% more than the current HRV. Moving on to charging performance. As I said, the EMY1 makes charging simple with its centrally located charging inlet, meaning customers have ultimate flexibility when pulling up to a charger. The charging point is located behind the front grille. It has a simple rotating panel and can be accessed via a button on the front or from inside the vehicle. EMY1 also features charging indicators that are integrated under the bonnet line and create a digital heartbeat that communicates the status of your vehicle when plugged in. The lights move from left to right when charging, flashing goodbye when complete and the cable is removed, adding another layer of personality. Moving on to the battery and motor. The drive unit integrates a motor, power drive unit and gearbox in one, producing 150 kilowatt, approximately 200 PS, with 310 newton meters maximum of torque. The water-cooled battery offers a total capacity of 68.8 kilowatt hour with a usable capacity of 62, a ratio of 90%. Charging is possible for both one and three phase with a maximum accepted rapid charging power of 78 kilowatt DC and approximately 11 kilowatt AC. Both charging speeds offer optimal performance for the battery in terms of charge speed, but also battery maintenance. In terms of range, EMY1 delivers over 400 kilometers, making this car a viable option as a main car for customers, particularly when in Europe, the average European daily commuting distance is just below 50 kilometers per day. Customers can fast charge their battery from 10% to 80% in approximately 45 minutes. Charging to 100 kilometers takes approximately 11 minutes, ideal for topping up on a long journey. Charging time is six hours when using the maximum 11 kilowatt AC charger. Now, turning our attention to the vehicle's handling, the EMY1's dynamics ensure a secure yet agile driving experience that follows Honda's human-centered philosophy, combining our dynamic driving spirit with the benefits of electric performance. And of course, like all Honda vehicles, EMY1 is fitted with the latest Honda sensing suite of active safety systems. I'm sure you'll agree the EMY1 marks an exciting new step in the electrification of the Honda range, providing all the benefits of an EV, alongside the versatility, comfort, and practicality people want from a compact SUV. Now, that concludes the deep dive into our three all-new models, but there is one more new vehicle to share with you. And now, for that, let me pass over to Ria Rosa, Deputy General Manager of Motorcycles for Honda Motor Europe. Thank you, Anna. Um, Honda's engine-powered two-wheelers have long provided millions of people with practical, affordable mobility. Late last year, Honda announced its intention to deliver carbon neutrality across our entire motorcycle range in the 2040s. As part of these plans, we committed to launch at least 10 electric motorcycles globally by 2025, increasing the sales to 1 million units within the next five years. The first step of, on this journey here in Europe starts with the EM1E, the first of five electric models to join the European lineup over the next three years. And here it is.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the EM1E. The EM stands for electric moped, and it is aimed at a younger demographic looking for easy, fun urban transport and is available to riders with an A1 license. As local legislation for parking in cities across Europe restricts the use and therefore the sales of 50cc scooters, the EV market is growing rapidly. The EM1E is perfect for short hops around town, makes journeys to work or college more efficient, quiet and emission-free. For a typical student who does a 30 kilometers total lap of the city during uh, an average day, the EM1E offers easy riding, quiet and environmentally friendly transport. Plus, with peel and grab rails, fold away foot pedals and rear carrier and USB socket for phone charging, this is a versatile two-wheel option. Then there is the battery, which is what makes EM1E really special. It is powered by a 50-volt Honda Mobile Power Pack E, which is built with a relentless focus on durability, reliability, and quality. As its name suggests, the Mobile Power Pack E is a swappable lithium-ion battery that can be easily removed from the EM1E for charging in the comfort of your home. It is built to last without deterioration in performance and able to guarantee hours of emission-free urban mobility whilst allowing over 2.5 thousand charging cycles in its lifetime. The sales method are of EM1E is also something we have given a lot of thought to. Our primary focus is to ensure that customers do not have to take responsibility for the disposal or recycling of the mobile power pack E. Therefore, the riders will use the EM1E based on a lease, rental or subscription scheme depending on the country. This will give our customers complete peace of mind throughout the life of the EM1E regarding both continued performance and eventually disposal of the battery. As the world's largest motor motorcycle manufacturer, the EM1E is just the start. Honda will continue to lead the industry in this era of carbon neutrality by continuing to offer the joy of riding with its electric two-wheelers. Thank you. As already mentioned by Akuta-san and Tom earlier, Honda believes in taking a multi-pathway approach to electrification in the pursuit of our carbon neutrality targets. Honda's belief is that our responsibility does not end at simply making environmentally friendly products. It also extends to maximizing the amount of renewable clean energy powering their use. You've seen from Hannah and Rui how we have the products that provide customers with pers personal mobility whilst reducing environmental impact. But we want to go further and support owners in maximizing the use, storage and generation of clean renewable energy, whilst also providing a genuine financial saving. However, this currently comes with many challenges. The aim to reduce carbon emissions has resulted in an increasing global demand for renewable energy sources, which suppliers around Europe are, at times, struggling to keep up with. While renewable sources reduce the overall carbon intensity of the grid, their transient nature also puts greater stress on the power grid to balance demand and supply at any given time. In addition, current global issues around the cost and supply of fossil fuels has added further volatility to energy markets. So how did we get here? Well, traditionally, consumer demand for electricity has been delivered by conventional power plants as an always-on service within the current ecosystem. In other words, grid operators have great control of demand as they can bring power stations on and off line to ensure sufficient capacity at any given time. However, when it comes to renewable energy, electricity can only be generated at certain times due to the reliance on external factors such as sunlight or wind. 
This presents grid operators with a new problem. How to balance demand and supply when they do not have full control over the power sources. Now, if there is high demand, but not enough renewable energy to meet it, they are forced to turn to traditional energy sources to bridge the gap. Some commentators would say that electric vehicles make this problem even worse. There is a higher demand for electricity driven by their growing use. And when EVs are charged at peak consumption times, or when renewable electricity generation levels are low, the benefit they deliver of zero tailpipe emissions is cancelled by emissions further up the chain in the power grid. But this is where we come in. Honda has developed intelligent charging solutions that can make electric mobility part of the solution rather than a problem. Aggregated car batteries present a huge opportunity to act as a store for excess electricity when renewable supply is high and demand is low, for example, in the late evening or early morning. We have therefore established our EMAS, or Energy and Mobility as a Service strategy, linking our efforts in the mobility and energy sectors together to provide a holistic solution. Our aim with this strategy is to maximize use of renewable energy for our products across all segments. Right here at Honda's European R&D facility, we are already developing and testing several ways in which to most effectively achieve this into the medium term. Both to deliver against our own corporate targets and to ensure we are providing best products and services for our customers. We'll hear more about this shortly. However, this is more than mere theory and we already have a real-world service life in Europe in the shape of e-progress, which was launched in the UK in 2021 following the debut of our first production EV, the Honda e. The service is designed to reduce customer energy bills and maximize the use of renewable sources by intelligently scheduling vehicle charging. But how does it work? It starts with our range of EV chargers, including the Honda Power Charger, which communicate remotely with the e-progress service to schedule access to the lowest cost, cleanest electricity possible. When paired with a dynamic tariff and the e-progress intelligent charging app, this currently ensures a customer's Honda e is always charged and ready to go when needed. The results are significant with the system saving our customers around 400 to 500 pounds a year on their charging. But we have also examples of high mileage customers saving well over 1,000 pounds per year. And of course, by charging when demand is low, customers are also maximizing their use of renewable sources. To put this into context and to further explain e-progress and its benefits, we spoke to one of our customers in the UK who has already been reaping the benefits of the service. Hi guys, I'm Aurea Duba and today I'm in Twickenham to meet Ed, one of Honda's e-progress customers. Now e-progress is kind of new to me, but I've been told it makes keeping an EV charged simple. We're going to talk to Ed to find out what that means in the real world. Let's go. Aurea, Hi Ed. You? Good to see Good you. Good to see you. Ed, so what is e-progress? Well, at its core, it's a way of connecting your car all the way back to the Honda mothership. And in the middle, you are saving both the cost of charging as well as saving carbon. It's a lot of moving parts, but it has been seamless. I'm astonished. Practically, how does it work? So you get a charger installed, you get an app, and you then set when you want to be using it and say, I don't need it till 8 a.m., it will magically pick the lowest cost time to charge for you. That's so clever. Should we go for a ride? Let's do it. Ed, tell me, what was the motivation on starting with e-progress then? Originally, I thought it would be really interesting to just see what Honda was trying to accomplish. They really have built a system that is very much tied up with not burning so much fossil fuel. You're saving the planet with every drive, sometimes even without driving. 
And did I hear that when it is charging at home, this is building into your own energy infrastructure in your in your household? Yes, I'll get notifications that say, if you charge your car between this time and this time, weirdly enough, you get paid. <laughs> Cha-ching! And it's all part of your bill because they are also integrated with whoever your power company is. They've got kind of every base covered then, haven't they? They really do. So Ed and I were talking a lot earlier and to know that using e-progress that you can reduce your carbon footprint and it saves money, that seems like enough for me as a consumer to want to go out and buy a Honda e and use e-progress right now. Just going from a, an internal combustion engine car to an EV is one step. And we believe that the EV customer is in an EV because they want to make that impact. So we're helping them to further reduce their CO2 footprint by scheduling at the right cost and at the right CO2 time. Matt, you must be getting a lot of exciting data back. Tell us a bit about that. Of course, yeah. So obviously we're monitoring where the customers are making their savings, how much they're saving. We've got a bit of a surprise for you actually, Ed. What I can show you is some of your data. So since September time, we've saved around £270. The other interesting point of the data is the CO2. So again, had you just plugged in at any time, it would have been about 237 kilograms of CO2. Actually, it was about a 160. And so we've made about a one third saving. How does that make you feel, Ed? Well, I'm amazed. I mean, almost no effort on my part, but with Honda's help, I've reduced my cost and my CO2 cost. Why would anybody not do that? Matt, thank you so much for giving me the time today and telling me all about e-progress. Ed, I need a ride home. Well, I've learned a lot from Ed and Matt today that e-progress isn't just a way for customers to save money. It also helps make better use of our energy infrastructure and guarantees that a Honda e is always ready to go when you need it. A great example there of the benefits of being experienced by e-progress customers in the UK. But for Honda, that is just the beginning. Having proven this concept with a small number of private customers in the UK, we are now focused on scaling up this part of our business and have established a new division within Honda Motor Europe working solely on the expansion of e-progress. The first step has seen us expand our charging approach by rolling out a solar component in the UK and Germany. For customers with a domestic solar panel array, the service will intelligently schedule a customer's EV charging based on when they are likely to have the most available self-generated solar energy. It will also consider upcoming weather forecasts and user-defined requirements when calculating when it's best to charge the vehicle. No additional equipment needs to be installed. The service is driven by the e-progress software. For example, the service will make sure it has a required level of charge for a specific departure time and journey, potentially aligning any charging requirements with the upcoming window of prolonged sunshine to deliver the greatest efficiency. This will ensure the most efficient and renewable-based charging for our customers, which will also reduce the stress being placed on the grid. With real confidence in both the technology and the customer benefits, we are now looking to dramatically scale up the e-progress service and make it available to more Honda customers. Following the launch of our three new SUVs, I can confirm today that the service will be extended to owners of both the CRV EPHEV and ENIY1. Furthermore, within 12 months, we will then extend the e-progress service out to most European markets. Currently, Honda is the only car company offering these services under their own brand. However, we have taken great care to ensure this technology is also compatible with non-Honda vehicles. Therefore, our approach is to not only roll e-progress out to Honda customers throughout Europe, but we are also planning to offer this service to EV owners of other brands. From there, we are looking at further expansion of the services scope to include additional grid and bi-directional charging services, all of which can play a role in reducing the burden on the generation of renewable energy. Eventually, the system might even extend beyond EVs, adding household appliances, such as domestic static batteries and heat pumps, all of which will contribute towards our overarching ambition for e-progress, 
which is to establish Honda as a major player within the European energy service market. I'm sure you can now see the opportunity that e-progress presents, and we are all excited to be leading this cutting-edge work here in Europe. Now let us turn further into the future by looking at some of the advanced research being done right here at this European R&D facility. I welcome to the stage Takehiro Wara, president of Honda R&D Germany. Thank you, Jorgen. So, e-progress has not only delivered great convenience and value for our customers, but it also serves as a fantastic proof of concept of the benefits of smart charging and energy management services. The work we are carrying out here at Honda is focused on broadening out these programs for the benefit of Honda, its customers, and wider society. As Jorgen touched upon, the provision and management of renewable energy for our products is a huge challenge. This is why we have invested in this test environment to research, further develop, and validate smart EV charging and energy man management solutions. This facility already connects different assets for the production, storage, and use of renewable tech energy. All with a view to maximizing usage whilst minimizing the associated carbon footprint and the cost. In fact, we have several projects live that are already demonstrating the benefits of such innovative new approaches to energy management. To explain a little more about our work in this area, I'd like to welcome our deputy general manager at Honda R&D Michael Fischer to the stage. Yeah, thank you, Vara-san. Yeah, as you can hopefully all now see, this is a really exciting time to be working in this area of research. And we feel there are several fantastic applications for our work that can deliver value for grid operators, energy companies, customers, and other stakeholders. Looking more closely at our approach to energy management on site, it's currently best demonstrated by how we control the smart charging of our electric vehicles fleet. The energy research environment you can see at our site connects the solar PV system to produce renewable energy with all our energy storage and consumers such as EVs, second life, battery storage, and the building itself. The installed EV chargers show a big variety of charging power, ranging from 10 kW normal charging up to 300 kW fast charging. All kinds of chargers are included, namely AC and BC, DC unidirectional chargers, as well as DC bidirectional chargers. This system is designed to consider user requirements, such as arrival time, current vehicle state of charge, planned departure time, along with how much renewable energy is available throughout the day. Not only to charge the fleet, but also to intelligently decide when to take energy back out of the vehicles to power this facility more efficiently. By applying these approaches, there are multiple opportunities for intelligent EV charging beyond e-progress, and this kind of flexible, bidirectional approach to energy management is where we see so much great potential. This includes behind-the-meter solutions, targeting electricity cost reduction for private homes and larger fleets where no grid interaction is necessary, and in front of the meter solutions, which directly support grid stability through grid interaction. Unfortunately, many potential services in this second area are not yet possible due to limitations caused by national regulations. However, work is already underway and to improve the regulatory conditions for an effective integration of electric vehicles into smart grids. As Vadasan just mentioned, I can now take you through some examples of potential services in this area. 
To start, charging services can be split into two categories. First, being unidirectional, also known as controlled charging or V1X. Our work on unidirectional front of the meter or FTM services includes a distribution system operator or DSO service called control charge. Control charge allows a signal to be sent from the DSO to stop charging at any given time, giving more control to manage the demand side. This approach may be used, for example, if the grid sees too much demand for the supply level available. We have already completed a verification test of this DSO application, confirming the operation of a control charge, evaluating the impact of this on customers by accepting it, and the amount of cost reduction offered as a result. Cost savings of almost 30% can be achieved through reduced grid fees when applying this service. A second category of charging is bidirectional, which covers both charging and discharging, also known as V2X. For fleet applications, we can stop charging at times of high electricity demand during low supply of renewable energy. This helps avoiding power peaks and is a process known as peak shaving, which results in less grid power fluctuations and therefore a more stable, cost-effective grid supply for the customer. V2X can further improve the benefits of peak shaving and the use of owned solar power. It does this by allowing vehicles within the charging ecosystem during peak demand to discharge electricity from their batteries to the building they are connected to. This is in evidence here at this facility via our Honda e-fleet and the Honda Power Manager bidirectional charger. It is another example of how to flatten power peaks and ensure the most cost-effective supply during peak periods. In Germany, this can save around 100 euro for each kilowatt peak that could be avoided on a yearly base. Control charge and peak shaving both seek to support the grid in flattening power peaks. Another research area is our frequency containment reserve project here in Germany and is the next proven step in this process. One of the challenges that grid operators face is to keep the grid in an ideal balanced grid frequency of 50 Hz. A too strong deviation from the 50 Hz ideal state causes grid instabilities, which could even lead to blackouts. Frequency Containment Reserve, also called FCR, is a well-established grid mechanism that supports keeping the 50 Hz grid frequency. Here at Honda, we sought to tackle this challenge by working in partnership with the transmission system operator Amprion and the virtual power plant operator Nextkraftwerke to support grid stability with FCR by our fleet of Honda E vehicles. The result was a fast reacting energy service where the vehicles were charged or discharged based on a direct measurement of the grid frequency at any given time. By aggregating our energy management system with the vehicles within this virtual power plant, the system was able to maintain the ideal balanced grid frequency of 50 Hz. If the frequency dropped lower than this, the Honda E-Fleet would be discharged, whereas if it went higher, the vehicles would be charged. The schedule of charging was determined throughout a given day by user input around their expected departure time and required battery state of charge. This frequency containment reserve project has clearly helped demonstrate the role connected energy ecosystems and electric vehicles can play in creating a more stable energy environment. Next, we looked at how our work could be combined with mobility services, such as car sharing or a fleet management program. To further understand the technical requirements, we partnered with the V2X Swiss project, supplying a fleet of Honda E and bidirectional power managers for distribution across Switzerland. The vehicles were integrated into the car sharing fleet of a company called Mobility and used by real customers. 
During parking and charging times, the vehicles provided grid services similar to the Frequency Containment Reserve project. Support was provided to the grid whilst ensuring customer needs were met in terms of the required state of charge at suggested departure times. This further demonstrated the real-world capability of this kind of charging approach. While EVs themselves can be important for storing excess electricity at times of a high supply, EVs may not always be connected to the system. Another important element to supplement our EV fleet is the use of second life static batteries. They are a key component within our program and together with EV batteries, they are the most efficient way to store and use excess electricity on an hourly base. However, their energy density is relatively low, which limits their potential long-term storage ability. Renewable energy sources not only fluctuate on an hourly base, but also seasonally. So if we are to truly stop our reliance on fossil fuel, it is essential to have the ability to store excess electricity during summertime for the use in winter. This, however, requires a long-term storage solution with a very high energy capacity. And here we believe hydrogen is the answer. It is an effective energy carrier, not solely for mobility applications, but across all industries and can help us decarbonize across society. Honda has been a long-standing pioneer when it comes to the research and development of hydrogen technologies. As such, we have already invested significantly into the expansion of this facility to include the use of hydrogen within our energy research program. This includes the addition of new equipment such as an electrolyzer, compressor and storage facility, all of which will allow us to research the best balance between a direct electricity management and transformation into hydrogen, fluctuating between the applications as required. In addition, our new hydrogen installation on-site will include a fueling station that uses on-site produced hydrogen. This means our approach to on-site smart charging will evolve to also include fuel cell vehicles. As you can see from this very wide range of work, Honda is taking a holistic view to supply a renewable energy for our customer. This is in addition to developing energy management technologies that can benefit the whole of society whilst contributing to overall grid stability. So, in summary, Honda's approach to holistic energy management encompasses combining energy and mobility as a service for maximum efficiency and cost saving, expanding our e-progress charging service as a first commercialization of our energy research program, and adding hydrogen to the energy mix, given its credentials as a high-density clean energy carrier. We hope this presentation has demonstrated Honda's continued commitment to create more efficient, reliable, clean and cost-effective energy solutions for customers across Europe with applications that should eventually extend globally. Thank you for your time. I will now pass over to Tom Gardner for some final words. Thanks, Michael. Today, we've shown you how our European business is playing a leading role in meeting the challenge of carbon neutrality. We've already electrified our European automobile lineup and are now moving rapidly to add further models and technologies, highlighted by the ZRV, CRV, and ENY1 you see here. We're making bold steps into delivering electrification in the motorcycle market with the EM1E, along with the innovative Home Honda Mobile Power Pack battery system. And we're doing it in a classic Honda way, providing a high quality product and giving the customer peace of mind through subscription and leasing offers. In addition, we're aiming to become a major player in the European energy services market through eProgress and have a wide range of research projects underway here in Germany, 
intended to result in leading products for customers and society in both the short and long term. It's absolutely clear from these examples that Honda is changing from the world's largest engine manufacturer to a company that is delivering the products and services customers will need to meet tomorrow's mobility challenges. And the European business is at the very center of that change. Europe's always been important to our business and will be even more so moving forward. Thank you very much, Tom. That just leaves me to thank you all for joining us today at Honda Research and Development Europe. And I look forward to catching up with you as the rest of the event progresses. Thank you very much.